So um, we're now going to take a leap across the ocean and are joined by Steve Slack in Manchester, UK. Hi, Steve. Steve is a heritage interpreter and he's helping museums, galleries, historic sites, libraries and other visitor attractions to make their history and meaning as relevant to people as possible. He's been a freelance interpretation consultant since 2009 and he's going to talk about a topic that has rightly been in the focus lately, controversial statues. Welcome, Steve. Hi, thank you. Thanks for the platform to talk about um, interpretation, which I could talk about for hours and the challenge we've all had to come down to talk about for five minutes has been um, felt by everyone, I think. So I thought I would talk a bit about statues. Um, they've been in the news quite a lot recently. Uh, take a walk around any town or city and you're likely to come across a statue, often the great and the good of the past, sometimes they're not so good uh, looking down on us. And often they just have like a little plaque in front of them with a person's name or their dates. And it's not much context. For some statues, we look back at a person's time on earth and we view it favorably. And some of them increasingly, rather a lot of them are not liked. And from our viewpoint today, I suppose we can interrogate not only what some of the people up there on the plinth did in the past, but also the decisions made by those who chose to put them up. And the, the debate around what we do with statues that we don't agree with isn't new. And for years, campaigners have been uh, demanding that we re remove some statues from public view. So what do we decide to do when we don't want to see them on the more, on our streets anymore? What are we supposed to do? I'm not the first person to, to ask that, and there have been many debates about it, the majority of which I can't cover in five minutes. But I think there are four main options open to us when it comes to looking at uh, controversial statues. Option one would be to pull them down. And, you know, st statues certainly do get taken down, often during moments of political change, often by nation states and by new regimes who want to remove part of history from uh, a streetscape. Sometimes it's done by citizens, particularly when frustration and anger boil over, when people have had enough. And in Bristol, as we've heard already uh, this evening, that statue of Edward Colston, who profited from the transatlantic slave trade, was recently toppled and even got thrown into the nearby harbour. But it doesn't just happen in the UK, it's Jefferson Davis, which we've known to many in the US. And the one at the bottom there is from Slovenia, where yesterday a statue of Melania Trump was burnt down. Now, removing a statue doesn't remove the history associated with it. You can take away the reminder, but that history is still there. What we can do, whether we take a statue down or not, is to change the narrative or to change its interpretation. And I believe that involves setting some of the more complicated characters in context. I was in my local park recently and I came across this statue of King Edward VII. Um, his mother, Queen Victoria, reigned for ages. And as far as I can understand it, he spent most of his time waiting to be king, basically partying, eating, drinking, getting fat, messing about with quite a lot of other people's wives. He only reigned for nine years before it all caught up with him. And so when I found him in the, in the, the park, I thought, what are you doing here? You're not statue worthy. You didn't do anything great or good. And then I read the interpretation plaque that was positioned uh, alongside. Yes, it acknowledged him as king. And it said why the statue was there and who'd paid for it but it also described him as a socialite, as a glutton with an expansive waistline and as a philanderer. And for me, that's a good piece of interpretation because it's honest, it's contextual. Uh, it took me from a place of questioning why he was even there to a place where I thought, okay, King Edward up there on your pedestal. Now I see your shortcomings have been acknowledged perhaps I'm a little happier for you to stay there. Your context is quite nicely set. And for me, that's the power of interpretation. And I'd like to suggest that contextual interpretation is an option available for those who aren't able or aren't willing to take a statue down. In some cases, however, a reinterpretation of a statue, no matter how good that interpretation is, 
simply won't do. And sometimes, quite rightly, they are forcibly removed by the people. But what happens to statues when they are down? Well, it seems that in Bristol, Edward Colston, having been fished out of the water, is now going to go on display in the City Museum. And the process of interpreting a statue like that is going to come under intense scrutiny. In a way, that's great news for the museum. The people are going to be queuing up to come and see this object that was what is on display. And we can be pretty sure for once that visitors are going to want to read the labels. And thankfully, the museum has also collected protest placards to be part of the display because we all want the context. Option four do nothing. Well, of course, we could just leave the problematic statues where they are. We could put our heads in the sand and hope that the issue goes away, perhaps leave it for another generation, right? Well, no, wrong, of course not. Doing nothing is rarely the solution. When it comes to tackling racism or any other form of prejudice, historically or today, not taking action makes us complicit in the act. So it's important that we respond with statements and policy positions, yes, but also with real affirmative action. I believe that setting problematic statues in context can be a part of that action. If there's a statue or, hey, another piece of public art near you that you've got a problem with, do something about it. Not necessarily pull it down. It could be a small or a beautiful thing that you do, but tweet about it, talk about it, Write to a politician about it. Get dressed up as that character and go in first person and tell your community about their foibles. Edit the statue's wiki page. Get people together in your community and find consensus. Interpret it, contextualize it. Because if you can see a problem on your street, what matters now is that you know that you have the opportunity to reinterpret the story and to do something about it.